The Chechen and Ingushetian peoples are an extremely fascinating account of how rugged geography and the eternal clashes of empires have shaped the development of the Caucasus. Located in the northeast, within the borders of the Russian Federation, the Chechen and Ingushetian peoples are actually part of the same ethnic and linguistic family, namely the Vainak. Having a degree of independence beforehand, the Vinok peoples were eventually absorbed into the Russian Empire via an invasion known as the Caucasian War. Led by Imam Shamil, the Vinok and other Caucasian peoples formed an imamate, leading to decades of resistance to foreign occupation, only to subside in 1864. The result was an expulsion of the majority of the peoples in the northwestern region, however many Chechens were also included. The seesaw treatment of Chechnya and Ingushetia's autonomy culminated in several rebellions from highland Chechens throughout the 1920s and the 1930s. It was further exacerbated by the mass deportation of the Vinak peoples to Central Asia during the late period of the Second World War. Similar scenarios have since played out from the dissolution of the Soviet Union when Chechnya announced its independence. Two brutal wars followed in which Russia finally reincorporated Chechnya by the early 2000s. The first Chechen war incorporated a nationalistic ethos, whilst the second harbored a deeper Islamist character. The infighting in Chechnya would also spread throughout the region with an Islamist invasion of Dagestan later on. Now facing what some refer to as a satrapy relationship, Russia is challenged with tackling the complex history and culture found in the republics of Chechnya and Ingushetia. First of all, both republics are very homogenous and Sunni Muslim. They're bordered by North Ossetia, the state of Georgia, Dagestan, and Stavropol Krai. Historically, the Vainak were nomadic peoples who grazed their sheep in the Caucasian alpine slopes during the summer, thus settling in the valleys during the winter. Because of the mountainous features, there has also been less contact with Russian authorities, thus allowing the persistence of clan systems in customary law, specifically Adat. As stated by Bruce Benson, customary law is developed from the ground, as customs and practice evolve because each individual recognizes the benefits of behaving in accordance with other individuals' expectations. This is in stark contrast with common law and civil law, which are practiced in the West and have a much more rigid methodological system. Within the various customs and adat exist hierarchical structures known as clans or types. To certain anthropologists, the types exhibited unusual coherence and solidarity, thus giving the impression that the Vinak peoples are characteristically warlike. Although these types have lost their significance as social units in the present years, they still have a degree of presence in the everyday issue settlements reminiscent of a semi-modern society. However, this is more the case with Ingushetians who have kept the types more relevant. Within these different clans and types that often expand based on kinship ties, there are Tukums. They can be thought of as alliances between multiple clans or types, which exist throughout both republics. In fact, types can be so large that they can encompass tens of thousands of people. There are around 150 types in Chechnya and over 350 in Ingushetia. However, going back to my point that types are more relevant in Ingushetia would seem like a paradox, since there are more in Ingushetia than there are in Chechnya. Out of the two, this is one feature that is present only in Ingushetia, familias. These are essentially subunits of types that are inherited through the father, thus giving more local familiarity to these identity networks. Going back to the brutal wars of the 1990s, there were actual instances where different clans and alliances would fight one another, either for Chechen independence or the Russian Federation. This further created bloodshed because of the Adat customary law provision known as blood feud. 
RT surprisingly covered the subject with a degree of accuracy, albeit exaggerated. In a documentary, it pointed to how members of any given type could avenge the deaths of fellow clan members by killing any member of the murderer's type. However, as previously mentioned, types generally don't have concrete social structures in Chechnya. Therefore, these vendettas would only allow punishment for the murderer or any immediate male relatives. These are pretty much honor killings and are prevalent in Ingusheti as well. Something that I liked that was covered by RT were the special reconciliatory commissions for customary disputes. These are precisely in order to resolve blood feuds that have become prevalent in the two Chechen wars and the successive insurgencies in both republics. Despite the prolonged religious and nationalistic strife throughout the two republics, I find something quite intriguing and flavorful about the nomadic and almost esoteric lifestyle of Chechens and Ingushetians. <laughs>